Thus saith the Lord, Stand ye in the ways, and see, and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way, and walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your soul. You are now listening to the Old Paths Podcast, hosted by Brother Reggie Page. Peace and blessings, everybody, and welcome back to the Old Paths Podcast, a.k.a. the OP Podcast. And yes, I am down for OPP, if OPP stands for the Old Path Podcast. I am your host, Brother Reggie Page, and I uh, hope everybody's having a good morning, and hope, hopefully everybody's having a good week. Well, today's episode is going to be a little different. I really didn't prepare anything. Um, well, it's not that I didn't prepare anything. I just have a lot of topics that I want to do, but I just quite didn't have them finished. However, I still wanted to present y'all with an episode. And um, this episode, we are going to continue on with Booker T. Washington's uh, character building book um, with a chapter called On Getting a Home. Now, just off the title, I can just speak for myself. Currently, I do not have a home. I've had a home. I've used to, you know, live on my own. Uh, But right now, you know, life and chance happened to us all. Um, But I'm going to just read what Booker T. Washington says, the advice that he gives. Um, And I just want to uh, sit and hopefully y'all sit just as a student and a man of history uh, talking to us about on getting a home. He says this. Every colored man owes it to himself and to his children as well to secure a home just as soon as possible. No matter how small the plot of ground may be or how humble the dwelling placed on it, something that can be called a home should be secured without delay. A home can be secured much easier than many imagine. A small amount of money saved from week to week or from month to month and carefully invested in a piece of land will soon secure a site upon which to build a comfortable house. No individual should feel satisfied until he has a comfortable home. More and more, the southern states are making one of the conditions for voting the ownership of at least $300 worth of property so that the persons who own homes will not only reap the benefits that come from owning a home in other directions, but will also find themselves entitled to cast their ballot. Hmm, maybe if we actually went back to this system of voting, um, you know, we will start to have uh, better quote-unquote politicians or political puppets um, voted in. But I digress. He continues. Care should be taken as to the location of the land. It is of little advantage to secure a lot in some crowded, filthy alley. One should try to secure a lot on a good street, a street that is carefully and well worked so that the surroundings of the home will be enjoyable. Even if one has to do go a good ways into the country to secure such a lot, it is much better than to buy a building spot on an unsightly, undesirable alley. That our people do best, as a rule, to buy land in the country instead of the city. But in either case, we should not rest until we have secured a home in one place or the other. No man has a right to marry and run the risk of leaving his wife at his death without a home. I know this with regret that there are many of our people who have already bought homes, who, after they have secured the land, paid for it, and built a cabin containing two or three rooms, do not seek to go any further in the improvements of their property. In the first place, in too many cases, the house and yard, especially the yard, are not kept clean. The fences are not kept in repair. Whitewash and paints are not used as they should be. After the house is paid for, the greatest care should be exercised to see that it is kept in first-class repair, that the walls of the house and the fences are kept neatly painted or whitewashed that no palings are allowed to fall off the fence, or if they do fall off, to remain off. If there is a barn or a hen house, there should be kept in repair and should, like the house, 
be made to look neat and attractive by paint and whitewash. Paint and whitewash add a great deal to the value of a house. If persons would learn to use even a part of the time they spend in idle gossip or in standing about on the streets and whitewashing or painting their houses, it would make a great difference in the appearance of the buildings as well as add to their values. Only a short time ago, near a certain town, I visited the house, I could not call it a home, of a presiding elder, a man who had received considerable education and who spent his time in going about over his district preaching to hundreds and thousands of colored folks. And yet the home of this man was almost a disgrace to him and to his race. The house was not painted or whitewashed. The fence was in the same condition. The yard was full of weeds. There was no walks laid out in the yard. There were no flowers in it. In fact, everything on the outside of the house and in the yard presented a most dismal and discouraging appearance. So far as I could see, there was not a single vegetable around this house, nor did I see any chickens or fowls of any kind. This is not the way to live, and especially it is not the way for a minister or a teacher to live, for there are men who are supposed to lead their people not only by word, but by example. Every minister and every teacher should make his home, his yard, and his garden models for the people whom he attempts to teach and lead. I confess that I have no confidence in the preaching of a minister whose home is in the condition of the one I have described. There is no need why, as a race, we should get into the miserable and unfortunate habit of living in houses that are out of repair, that are not whitewashed or painted, that are not comfortable, and above all else, in the houses that we do not own. There is no reason why we should make our homes not only comfortable, but attractive, so that no one can tell from the outside appearance at least whether the house is occupied by a white family or a black family. After a house has been paid for, it is not only should be improved from year to year and kept in good repair, but as the family grows, new rooms should be added. The house should not only be made comfortable, but should be made convenient. As soon as possible, there should be a sitting room where books and papers can be found, a room in which the whole family may, may read and study during the winter nights. I do not believe that any house is complete without a bathroom. As soon as possible, every one of our houses should be provided with a bathroom so that the body of every member of the family can be baptized every morning in clean, invigorating fresh water. Such a bath puts one in proper condition for the work of the day and not only keeps one well physically, but strong morally and religiously. Another important part of the home is the dining room. The dining room should be the most attractive and most comfortable room in the house. It should be a large and airy a room that into which plenty of sunlight can come, and a room that can be kept comfortable both in the summer and in the winter. These suggestions are made to you with the hope that you will put them into practice, and also that you will influence others to do the same. They are all suggestions that we as a race notwithstanding our poverty, in most cases, can find a way to put into practice. Every one of them should be taken up by our teachers, our ministers, and by our educated young folk. They should be taught and urged in schools and churches and farmers' meetings and women's meetings and, in fact, wherever the people of the race come together. So let me summarize all this before I end, the, end this episode. Excuse me. In this chapter, Booker T. Washington argues that a home is more than just a physical structure. It is a foundation for character development and a source of strength and stability. He emphasizes the importance of ownership, both physical and metaphorical, in building a strong sense of self and community. Booker T. Washington begins by defining a home as, and I quote, the place where we are understood, the place where we are appreciated, the place where we are loved, the place where we can go in times of troubles and be comforted. He argues that a home provides a sense of belonging and security that is essential for personal growth. Washington then goes on to discuss the importance of ownership and how he believes that owning a home, even a small one, instills a sense of pride and responsibility. He also argues that ownership fosters a commitment to the community. As homeowners, 
are more likely to be invested in the well-being of their neighborhoods. And he concludes his essay by urging his readers, his students, his listeners to strive for home ownership, both literally and figuratively, because he believed that by creating homes for themselves and their families, they can build a better foundation for the future. So again, you know, the key points are this. Again, the home is more than just a physical structure. It is a foundation for character development, a social strength and stability. Um, it helps build communities. It gives you pride and responsibility, a commitment, right? Uh, it fosters commitment to the community. And um, this, this essay is very relevant to all people of all backgrounds and economic circumstances. And the concept of a home can be applied to many different aspects of life. Uh, such as relationships, careers, and communities. Um, he even mentions, you know, the work of the minister, right? Uh, the minister needs to make sure he has his home together. Um, the teacher needs to make sure they have their home together um, because it, it says a lot. It does indeed say a lot. Um, if you go into somebody's house, right, and their home is a hot mess, what does that say about that person? it probably means that that person's life is a hot mess. What if you go into somebody's house, the outside is all nice and clean, but then you walk inside, it's a hot mess. What does that say about that person? Usually those type of people, they're clean on the outside, but inside they're a hot mess. And when you get to know them more personally, you realize how, well, uh, how wretched they are. You know what I'm saying? But when you meet someone that's house is clean on the outside and clean on the inside, and again, this is not for every case, but usually they're, they're a little bit more disciplined. They, they uh, take better care of themselves, right? Um, it, it's a reflection, typically, right? That's what we hope that the concept of the home can be applied to. But again, nonetheless, we should all pursue to trying to own a home. And Booker D. Washington's message is not to beat each other's up. Um, for those who never own a home, excuse me for my language, I'm, my voice is kind of groggy today. But uh, Washington's message is one of hope and empowerment. He's not trying to beat any of us up. He's not saying get a home or die, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But he just believes that everyone has the potential to create a home for themselves regardless of their circumstances. And hey, that's just the low-down gospel truth. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, uh, please like, comment, and subscribe, and share the knowledge with the folks and kin folks. And remember, the truth shall make you free. May the God of all knowledge be with you all. Peace.